Hello, this is Abby from OllieHolly.com. Welcome to part three of the Jigglypuff tutorial. In the previous videos, I showed you how to crochet the different parts of Jigglypuff. In this part, I'll be showing you how to assemble everything together. If you would like to follow along with a written pattern, you'll find the free pattern on my blog and the printable PDF in my shop. Also, if you are new to crochet or amigurumi, I recommend that you watch the Amigurumi Basics playlist before proceeding with this video. Now that all of the pieces are ready to go, I can start assembling my Jigglypuff. The first thing I will be sewing on is the poof. Because my tail is coming out of this stitch here, I will be keeping this towards the bottom. And I'm lining it up to the center of the head here, then I'm using a long pin to help secure this end down. I'm then going to slowly bend the poof into a reverse J, making sure to pin it as I'm bending it to help secure the shape to make it easier for sewing later. Now I'm going to sew the poof onto the top of the head. To sew the poof onto the head, I'm locating where the tail is. And the spot immediately under the tail is where I'll be attaching the poof to the head. So I'm inserting my needle into the stitch here, immediately below the yarn tail. And I'm going through one stitch sideways and pulling through. Then I'm inserting my needle back into the poof, moving the needle a few rounds to the side. So I'm just moving it about two rounds over, and I'm making sure to keep it as close to the head as possible. Then I'm inserting the needle back into the head immediately below where the tail is. And I'm going one stitch to the side and pulling it through. And just like before, I'm reinserting my needle into the poof, trying to stay as close to the head as possible. And I'll be skipping through the next few rounds in the poof, then threading the tail out and pulling through. If you're noticing that you're having a hard time pulling the needle out, you can use a pair of pliers to gently help guide the needle out. Just be careful when using the pliers because there's a chance you'll break your needles. So take care to not clamp down too hard or go at weird angles. So now I'm just going to repeat the steps to secure the outside edge of the poof to the head. And as I'm working, I'm also going to start removing the pins that are keeping the poof in place.
So for the inner edge of the J, because it's a little bit hard to get to, I'm just doing one or two stitches inside this area here. Once I'm happy with how secure the poof is, I'm going to thread the needle through the head and out the side. Then, to further secure this tail down, I'm going to mimic the stitch here. And because I'm working the X stitch, all of my stitches look like little X's. So I'm just going over this part of the stitch here, and I'm inserting my needle in and out the side. Then I'm just using my needle to loosen it here so that there isn't a dent. Then I'm taking my scissors and cutting the tail, squishing the head to hide the tail. Next, I'm attaching the ears. I like to start off by gauging where to pin the ears down by looking at the head from the top down. The first ear I'm pinning down is the right ear, and I'm figuring out the position of this ear before I pin the other ear to the head. So I'm just placing a pin here to see if I like the position of this ear. And it looks pretty good to me, so I'm pinning it down all the way around, and I'll make adjustments later. With the first ear pinned down, I'm now going to pin the other ear. With the other ear, I'm just going to try to mirror the placement of the first ear. And a good way to check for symmetry is to count the rounds on the head and try to make sure that the top of both ears are starting on the same round. So with the second ear, I'm going to pin it down all the way around, and I'll make adjustments after both ears are pinned down properly. To check to see if the ears are properly aligned, I like to compare the ear position to the eyes by looking at the piece from the top down. So I'm noticing that the left ear here is a little bit closer to the eyes when compared to the other side. And when you look at it from the side, you'll notice that there is a five stitch space here between the eye and the ears. When you look at the other side, there is a six stitch gap. And I actually like the positioning of this ear more, so I'm going to adjust the right ear to match the left ear. After the adjustment, this looks a little bit better to me, and I'm happy enough with the position, so I'm going to sew this ear down first. Just like with the poof, I'm inserting my needle into the head, directly below the tail from the ear. 
I'm going to go one stitch to the side and I'm pulling through. Then in the back of the ear, I'm going to insert my needle through the first space here of the outer ear piece. And I'm pulling through. I'm also going to remove that first pin there because I just secured the corner of the ear to the head. Then I'm inserting my needle back into the head, going one stitch to the left, pulling through. Then I'm just going to repeat everything I just did all the way around the ear. So now that the back is completely attached, I'm going to start sewing the inner ear to the head. To further secure the ear, I'm just running my tail through one more stitch. Then I'm threading the tail out the side of the head, then taking my scissors and snipping off any excess tail. Before sewing the second ear on, adjust the pins to match the first ear. It's very likely that the position of the first ear has shifted because of sewing. I'll be sewing the second ear off camera. After sewing the other ear on, pin the hands and the feet to the body. The position I have the feet at is right beside the center hole at the bottom over here. And for the hands, I have the top of the hand starting at round 13, going into round 14, 15, and 16, and it's the same on the other side. And for the right hand, it's about two stitches behind the eyes. And on the left hand here, it's one, two, three. So I actually have to adjust this to match the other side. I'm starting off by sewing the left hand on. And just like before, I'm inserting my needle into the head, directly below where the tail is coming from on the hand. And I'm going one stitch to the side.
Then I'm inserting my needle into the next stitch of the hand and pulling through. I'm then going to just repeat doing that all the way around this hand. Now that I've gone all the way around this hand, I'm going to thread the tail through the head and out the back. And like I mentioned previously, if you're having a hard time pulling your needle out, you can use a pair of pliers to help gently pull the needle out. Trim any excess yarn to hide the tail. I'll be sewing the other hand off camera. To sew the feet onto the bottom of the body, I'm going to be whip stitching the edge of the foot to the body. To do so, I'm inserting my needle into the body directly below where the yarn tail is. Then I'm poking my needle out the next stitch on the foot. I'm pulling through. Repeating that, I'm inserting my needle into the body and out the edge of the next stitch of the foot. Pull through. Then I'm just going to continue securing the edge of the foot to the body. To weave the tail in, I'm inserting the tail back into the body and out the back of the head and pulling through. And just like before with the ears, I'm going to mimic this stitch here. I'm inserting my needle into this stitch and out the back of the head to further secure this yarn tail. Then I'm cutting the tail and squishing the head to hide the tail. Now that all of the parts are sewn on, let's give Jigglypuff his little smile. Whenever I'm embroidering anything, I like to map out where I want the embroidery to go with some pins. So in this case, because Jigglypuff will be smiling, I'm mapping out a very shallow U-shape with the pins between the eyes. To check to see if I like the shape, I like to take my embroidery floss and hold it up against the pins to see if the shape is looking the way I want it to. In this case, I think this is looking pretty good. This pin here might be a little bit off, so I'm making a slight adjustment to it. Then I'm just cutting a long strand of the embroidery floss. So I'm doing roughly 12 inches. Mm -hmm. 
And for this project, I'm just using my regular darning needle for embroidery. I'm inserting my needle into the side of the face and out the first pin here. And I'm pulling through. And it's okay that this pin fell out because it's just there to let me know where to start. So I'm pulling almost all the way through, but making sure to leave a short tail to help with adjusting the tension of the smile later on. Then I like to wrap the embroidery floss around the pins in the way the shape is supposed to look. I'm then inserting my needle into the final pin here. And to make the line a little bit thicker, I'll be going over the line twice. So to do so, I'm inserting my needle out the first pin spot, pulling through, and back into the final pin spot. Next, I'm threading the needle out of the closest pin spot, so this one right here. So I'm inserting my needle into that pin spot, removing my pin, and pulling through. Making sure that I'm going over the smile line, I'm inserting my needle back into the same spot my yarn tail is coming out of. This acts as a staple to hold the smile down in place at this particular spot. I'm going to thread the needle out of the next pin spot. Pull through and you'll see that the first staple holds the smile line down in place in the first pin spot. Then making sure I'm going over the smile line, I'm inserting my needle back into the same spot and out the next pin spot. And into that final pin spot, I'm just doing the same thing. So I'm inserting my needle back into the same spot. But instead, I'm weaving the tail out the side of the head. I'm then pulling on the first tail to tighten up the line. And I'm also using my needles to adjust the smile a little bit. And now my Jigglypuff has a cute little smile, and I'm pretty happy with the way it looks. However, if your embroidery isn't looking the way you want it to, all you have to do is use your scissors to carefully cut the line and remove the smile to start over again. I'm then cutting the excess embroidery floss and I'm squishing the head to hide the tail. The final thing I'm doing, and this is completely optional, I'm taking some bright pink yarn and I'm embroidering a short line under each eye to create blush. Using the same darning needle, I'm inserting my needle through the side of the body and I'm having the needle come out one round below the eye. I'm pulling through, then I'm going two stitches to the side. And I'm inserting my needle through this stitch here, and I'm having it come out underneath the other eye. And then I'm pulling through and checking for the position to make sure it's identical to the other side. Then I'm just counting two stitches inserting my needle into that spot and out the side of the body. And just like with the mouth, I'm using the tip of my darning needle to gently adjust the blush lines. Then I'm just going to cut the yarn tail as close to the piece as possible. 
and I'm squishing the head to hide the yarn tails. And that's it for this tutorial. You've just created your very own Jigglypuff. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Follow me on Instagram to see what I'm up to on a daily and also to receive updates on new patterns. And visit my site for free patterns. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye!